Welcome back. You are on Easy Chinese Cooking. This is the perfect crossover between cooking and law. From me, the Black Belt Barrister. So I've seen lots of different questions about service charges and tips in restaurants. And I'm hoping to clear up some of those for you in this video. So first of all, some people say that there is no obligation to pay these service charges whatsoever. But that's not quite true. It really depends on how prominent this service charge is when you go into the restaurant. And I'll give you some examples. If when you're walking into the restaurant there is a big sign that says there is a 20% service charge on all meals and all orders, then that is more likely to become enforceable when you pay the bill. On the other hand, taking a stark contrast to that, if there is very small print at the back of the menu which isn't very prominent and it says that it's 35% service charge on all orders, but your attention hasn't been brought to it, you didn't see it, and you only realise it when you get to the end of the meal, and you see the bill with 35% added on as a service charge. This is almost certainly not going to be enforceable because it wasn't brought to your attention, it isn't really fair, and in all likelihood did not at any point become a term of the contract. What's more normal, however, is that on most menus, somewhere fairly prominent, there's going to be some line that tells you that there is a 20% service charge added to the bill. If there isn't, and you've never seen any notice towards a service charge whatsoever, and you get to the end of the meal and you're given the bill and there's a 20% service charge on there, then you would be quite within your rights to say, I'm not paying this because I was never told about it, I never read about it, it wasn't clear from the menu, therefore I don't agree to pay it. In one example from my personal experience, we were at the end of a self-serve buffet, self-serve really being the operative thing here because the service charge should apply to service. At the end of the meal, we were presented with the bill with a 25% service charge on it. Now, the only thing we asked for was water during that meal. So there wasn't really any service to speak of, much less being informed about this service charge at the outset. So I did say that I would rather not pay this service charge because we didn't feel that we had any of that kind of service and it wasn't prominent to me at the beginning. At which point they told me that they were going to charge me £5 per each glass of water. Now this was just ordinary tap water, it hadn't been chilled, there was no ice or anything else. So in fact the restaurant is not permitted to charge you for that water and in any event they didn't tell us that the water was chargeable in the first place so that wouldn't have been permissible anyway. Other questions come about as to what happens to this service service charge and whether the restaurant owners can keep these service charge or tips in any other form that they might receive them. Now it is already law that such tips cannot count towards the minimum wage paid to a restaurant staff but new laws proposed by the government are going to say that the restaurant owners are not permitted to keep any such service charges because many of the staff depend on tips and service charges to supplement their income because they are typically paid at minimum wage. Following a consultation in 2016 the government set out its findings and clear policy objectives, finding that in principle consumers believe that tips and gratuities and service charges are discretionary, that tips, gratuities and service charges are received by the workers in an establishment, and that the process of distributing these among staff is clear and transparent. Moreover, cash tips are not necessarily the legal property of the business itself, and if staff do share among themselves and retain these cash tips, it would be their own responsibility to declare this as income to revenue new and customs. So all in all this is such a change and become much clearer this year 2022 hopefully aligning the law with what the average consumer believes does and should happen. So I hope that serves to address some of the questions. Please make sure you subscribe here because this is Easy Chinese Cooking where we bring you genuine authentic Chinese cooking and as always thank you for watching.